This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? Welcome to the winter garden. We've got an extra layer on compared to last week, but this isn't bad for January. Let's start off by checking out some more plants that have persisted during the winter. Well, check out these pansies. I'm so excited because you never know what fall planted pansies are going to do. If you get a real killer cold spell, they'll be gone. But obviously we've had a mild winter. Look at these. They look pretty good. Actually, I've got some in the greenhouse that are almost ready to bloom. But believe it or not, there is a variety of plant that is actually blooming right now in the middle of the winter. It's right down there. Well, check out this hellebore, common name Christmas rose, because when everything else finishes, it starts blooming in November. Begins with this beautiful white flower, which fades to kind of a mottled pink. And believe it or not, when there's a thaw, the bees will actually come to it. And these petals are almost plastic-like, and they will persist all the way to spring. Well, as a gardener, I am thrilled to have a mild start to the winter. Who knows what's left? If you're a skier, maybe not so much, but it's a great time to get out in the garden and look at plants with winter interest, and this is one of them. Heptacodium, yes, we grow it for its beautiful white fall flowers, but in the winter, it's a star with this tan exfoliating bark. And I have one more plant to show you. We've seen it before, but it is in its winter glory. Well, from now until eternity, anyone who visits the garden is gonna to have to hear, I only spent $50 for this Japanese maple. Just look at it. It is a stunner. And if you're looking for a small tree with bold interest, a Japanese maple might be something for you. There's lots of different varieties with great colors in it like this one. Now we're gonna deal with our friend, the mole. You know, sometimes it's a good thing to complain to your boss. We were talking and I said, I just don't know what to do during the winter, or what I'm gonna do this week for the video. And she said, do something on moles. My lawn is completely covered. And I'm hearing that a lot from other gardeners. This is when we see moles. A lot of times it'll be under snow cover when we have it. And they'll be making these tunnels all underneath there and softening up the earth. And you know, moles are actually a good thing for the garden. <laughs> they aerate the soil, they eat grubs, and they leave a little bit of fertilizer behind. <laughs> it's just when they're out in your lawn where you can't stand what it looks like, you've got to deal with them. And I wanted to deal with them, of course, organically and I've been looking at lots of different products and I got this from Best Feeds. It's called Mole Scram and it has lots of natural products in here that will detour the mole, that will move it out of the area and that's the trick to using this is applying it the right way. This Mole Scram has three basic active ingredients. Castor oil, nobody likes castor oil, citronella oil and garlic oil and most importantly the moles can't stand it. Now let's say we had mole tunnels all along here we don't want to force the moles that way. We want to force them that way and down to the neighbors. And so what we're going to do is set up a barrier up at the top of this garden bed, leave it there for a day, and then work down the next day and the next day till we force the moles that way. Here we start on day one. Day two. And we're finishing up on day number three. And look, I didn't even change my clothes. <laughs> All right, we've repelled our moles. Let's finish up. Before we finish up, check out this tomato seed I ordered from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. It says in the catalog, one of the best tasting ever. And look at that color. That's as black as they get. Now, until next week, I'm going to be spending some more time with those seed catalogs and, of course, out here in the garden until things get cold. We'll see you then. You want me to throw it like this? So you can no, no, I think that's good. This week in the garden, I've got a magic trick to deal with mo Wait, you gotta wait till I, you gotta wait till I do my magic. Okay, right. <laughs> this week in the garden, I've got a magic trick to deal with moles. And then. <laughs> this week in the garden, I've got a magic trick to deal with moles. We're looking at plants with winter interest. And have you ever heard of a black tomato? They're tasty. Well, as a gardener, I'm thrilled to have a mild start to the winter. Who knows what's left? <laughs> Someone get rid of this rock. 
Isn't it great to have a nice mild garden? <laughs> what do you think, Max?